Hi, and welcome to the Google Sheets tutorial on how to create a combo chart. Creating a combo chart is a fairly simple process, much like other charts in Google Sheets. It's done by selecting the data and then inserting a chart. Each chart has a different purpose, um, but with a combo chart, you're actually going to put together the values of two different charts and make you know, a clearly a combination chart. So that chart's going to take multiple data sets expand it across a certain time period and look at it. So in this, this situation, we have an average sale over a year's time period, looking at each month's average sale. We have projected time period based on previous year's sales, and we have the actual data and the difference from the projection to see how close the projections are in place. So we're going to look at the data, and the combo charts can allow us to see both a line chart and a column chart, which will put their kind of their benefits together and allow you to have a more effective and more visually kind of um, impactful me message within your chart. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select the data table that we want to make the chart out of, which I've done here. You can do it in two spots like you can any other chart. You can go up here and hit insert chart, which will automatically run it. Or the other way is to go up in the menu, hit insert, come down and hit chart. Either way, it works just as well. I tend to go this route, which is quicker, easier to get to. Now, when you insert a chart, as we've seen in previous charts, you're going to find that that chart is, they project kind of what they think you're going to need. Um, obviously, in this situation, it's just a line chart. We're actually looking for a combo chart because we want to. That's what we're focusing on today. So in order to change that, we're just going to come over here to the right underneath Setup in the Chart Editor. We're going to click on that. And you're going to have some options. One of the options down here in the suggested is Combo Chart. Or if someone has suggested, it's just this right here. And it's like Combo Chart. And now what you see is a column chart combined with a line chart. And there's actually two line charts. So this one right here. Is showing us the difference so it shows us the months that, that we were actually in the native the actual was below the projected and then shows us the months where the actual was above projected and then as well you get the projected time period and the actual amounts so you have three different ways of viewing it in within that but it, it creates a very visual um, and effective message and that's that's really how you build it now obviously Google Sheets um, is looking to try to tell you Kind of what they expect the data to be needed, how it's going to be needed done. So when you put it in a combo chart and it looks like this, great, everything worked out. But that's not always the case. Sometimes it's not going to have the data correctly or you're going to have things turned around and you need to kind of work through it. So I'm going to run through real quick how you can go ahead and edit the combo chart to fit your needs a bit more. So in here you'll see the data range. That data range is, as you can see, B2. To E15. So that's easy enough. So, in the event that you need to change the data range, say, um, for example, you had another data line here and it didn't automatically pull in and get added in. So, in order to do that, you could always come in here and change the data range to F15. You'd also need to come in here and actually select it as well there in order for it to actually work. But that would be one way of doing it. Um, we put it into the range and then it's added into that area. So that's just one way of changing the data in which you've added to the sheet or taken away. Then you can change the x-axis. The x-axis is currently the month down here. So you obviously have some options. You can add labels which put some cool labels there if you'd prefer that. Um, if you don't want that then the other options you can change if it's not the right data, you can select a different data here. Obviously, it's the correct data there, so we're, we're good on that. Aggregate here. Um, this checkbox won't actually make a difference on our current chart, but if you were working with a chart that had multiple data entries for different months, so say March had 18 data entries, all of a sudden the aggregate would be really beneficial. You could sum, min, max, count, average. really um, makes it a much more versatile tool in that sense, but... Currently, like I said, that's not going to make any difference for us. I already showed you how to add a series. Currently, there's not one showing. If you have added one within the range, then it will be showing. That's one thing to note. Um, another thing down here, switch rows and columns. This is completely ineffective for what we're working on now. But in the event that you had a table that was built differently than what you're viewing, you would use switch rows and columns. 
use row two as headers. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but if we take it off, it doesn't work right, so we, we leave it off. Um, then use column B as labels. Again, yeah, it's, it's self-explanatory, and it's also just built in because it takes um, these down here and puts them right in. Um, same with row two. So the next thing you can do is you can actually customize the visual effects of a chart. Um, you can do this with any of your charts. It's very simple. You can change your background color, your font, your chart border color. Um, you can also do things like smooth lines. So now you no longer have those jagged edges. You can maximize. I don't typically do this, but that's one option if you if it fits what you need. Plot null values. You don't have any null values in the current data set, so it won't do that. But in the event that you had it, a null value or a zero, you can have it towards either not plotting them or plotting them. Compare mode to have compare against previous data. Chart and access title. Um, you can change the different titles, subtitles, uh, horizontal access title and vertical access title. Um, this one's currently horizontal and that's month, so you can change that if you want. You can remove it, you can center it, you can change the color. And the series. So this is the main kind of meat and potatoes of this editing bit. It's all the colors in this section here. So it's currently applied to all series. You want to change that to projected or whichever one you're going to work on. It's currently in column, um, which works for us. And we can change it to area if we choose. Um, let's see here. I like the columns, so we'll leave it there. We can change the fill color, line color, uh, line dash type. So there's a lot of variety here which you can change. You can add error bars in, um, data labels, trend line. So you have the ability with all those that you can do the same thing again with actual, you have all the things, your point size, your point type, um, and error bars, data labels. So then you have your legend down here. In your legends, you have the ability to change this section here. Um, you'll see that the, the updates are based on what your settings are there, but you can change the position of it. Um, so you like to put them at the bottom, you can change the left, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, font and font size. Horizontal access, another one that you can make any changes font and size about. You can also slant the labels automatically or within a certain range. Vertical access it gives you the ability to do a bit more. Uh, min values, light, uh, font, color, size, scale factor, number format. It's all kind of set ahead of time and automatically built in, but you can always change that. Grid lines and ticks. Um, horizontal, you can do the major ticks. Vertical, you have the ability to change your step, your count. So these are all things you should play with and look around if you feel you need them. Um, the, the basic settings are quite effective as is, uh, but obviously if you have a specific look you're looking for, that would be where you want to do it. So this wraps up the Google Sheets tutorial on how to create a combo chart. Thanks for joining us.